Hi friends, my name is Mukesh Gupta, and uh, welcome to the weekly conversations on sales and selling. Today, um, we are going to talk about uh, uh, the lessons learned from the book uh, uh, Data Driven uh, by Jenny Diabon. It's an interesting book which uh, was uh, originally published uh, in 2015. So it's a it's not a recent book; it's an old book. But I think that the concepts that the book holds um, are very relevant even today when it comes to um, uh, sales um, context. The primary um, thing that the author is uh, trying to say through this book is the fact that uh, uh, it is important to not necessarily go by your gut uh, in terms of you know um, leading a sales organization but it is super critical to identify the key performance metrics identify them collect data for them and define the progress that you are making define the decisions that you are taking based on the data that you have collected as part of this um, entire model she also talks about the fact that there are four or five levels of um, uh, data collection and uh, uh, data driven uh, activities or decision making that is possible. So the first level is a uh, first level of data collection that uh, uh, enables us is to do. Um, just give me a second. Let me open up that page. The first level of uh, uh, maturity in terms of data collection in a sales process, or for that matter, in any process, is what she calls descriptive analytics. This talks about what happened in the past. Right? So for example, how many deals were closed, which deals were closed, um, how, how long did they take, uh, who closed them, uh, how much was the value of the deal, and all of that. So this is, it tells you what happened in the past, which is what is descriptive analytics. The second kind of, or the probably the second stage in terms of maturity of using data in your sales sales process, is what she calls as diagnostic analytics. So this is where uh, uh, she says that you know this these data points actually tell you what is happening inside of your pipeline. So for example, how many of your uh, uh, sales uh, uh, leads actually clicked on a link in a in a campaign that you ran? How many of them have actually had a conversation with you? How many of them have actually built a business case with your team? How many of them have actually had multiple rounds of conversations and have introduced their business to your, uh, to your sales organization? And things like that, right? So the, the, the third level of maturity is what she calls predictive analytics, where she talks about the fact that you know, these are data points which tell you where your deal is going towards, whether or not, what is the probability of a particular deal getting closed in a particular quarter or in a particular month, right? And last or the highest level of maturity that she talks about is uh, prescriptive analytics, which is where she says that you know, the data points that you collect not only inform you whether or not um, a deal is gonna close and uh, by when it is gonna close, these data points also tell your sales teams exactly what do they need to do in order to progress the deal and increase the probability of you closing the deal. Now, um, the way she, um, she has written this book is in the form of a um, fable or a story, uh, if you may want to call it that. Um, she takes a typical sales organization and uh, from there builds the different kinds of problems that. Um, a sales organization or a head of sales has in her new role because someone coming into a sales organization to lead the sales of a of a large a fairly large corporation uh, where uh, the explicit reason why she is brought in is because the sales organization is not functioning really well now if you actually look at it um, in most of these situations uh, i'm sure you have your own experience uh, to talk about as well. Let's assume that uh, you are uh, brought in from, a, from outside of, your, of an organization to lead and transform the sales organization into becoming a productive one. 
which means that the existing team is not meeting their quotas, which also means that um, maybe about a fifth of the sales organization, say fifth of the sales AEs uh, are the ones who are bringing in the most 80% um, uh, of the revenue, which is the Pareto principle, right? So 20% of your sales executives bring in 80% of your revenue. And uh, you will also typically find in these organizations uh, that um, marketing uh, is driven by their own metrics. Uh, the pre-sales organization, if you're talking about a large organization which has a multi-month uh, or multi-week uh, sales cycle and needs uh, pre-sales support, they drive or they run to a separate beat. You know, they have their own KPIs that they are measured on. Then comes the sales uh, organization. Uh, they are measured on deals closed or revenue brought in or you know, um, revenue booked. And then there is another organization, uh, um, for example, customer success, which is responsible for renewals. If, if you are offering a product that requires customers to renew over a period of time, uh, uh, their subscription. Now, what happens typically in all of these cases? And then there is the product organization, um, there is the support organization, and uh, a lot of these organizations need to come together in order for the sales organization to actually deliver uh, the revenue numbers or the revenues that they need to book. Now, typically one of two things holds true. Number one, the problem is not in the sales process or in the sales organization. The problem lies elsewhere, but you're trying to fix the sales problem. So for example, I've seen organizations where HR teams, uh, specifically they've been tasked by their sales VP or sales or CEO, asking them to find um, uh, an expert in sales process or an expert in selling to bring them into the organization and get the sales organization or the sales teams or the account managers and the sales executives to undergo training so that they can improve their productivity of the sales account, uh, sales uh, AEs or the sales engineers or the sales executives. Now, um, it could very well be possible that uh, the problem is not in the sales side of the business, but it could be because the product is not ready yet, or if there are flaws in the product, or if there are challenges in the way the product is designed and the time of uh, the time it takes to kind of for a customer to implement and go live um, and start using the product it could be that the product is very very difficult to use it could be that uh, um, the support of um, uh, the support organization and the support that the support organization provides to customers is not up to the mark and which kind of uh, uh, is a word of mouth uh, people know that you know while the product might be good the post sales support is not that really great and a lot of times customers want that post sales support to be really great in order for them to invest in the product. So the first thing that you need to do if you are being invited to solve um, uh, a sales problem is to find out where exactly does the problem lie? Is the problem in a sales organization, which is you know right from the entire funnel, right? So right from the time you bring in leads to the time you close in, uh, close uh, deals. So is the problem there? Or is the problem in the product side of the house? Is the problem on the support side of the house? Or is the problem elsewhere? You know. So once you've identified that, it is important that you fix that. While you're trying to fix that, you cannot just sit uh, on your hands uh, expecting everything else to kind of work in order for you to go to work in your sales organization. Now, when I say sales organization, I mean the combination of all the teams that come together in order to deliver a customer to the organization or a deal to an organization. It includes right from the time um, uh, a lead or a prospect touches you know, or goes to your website, right from that point in time to some, to actually someone signing on the dotted line to actually someone re 
doing business with you. Right? So that's the entire cycle. And typically it includes someone, uh, the marketing organization, the pre-sales organization, the, uh, the product support organization, the, the customer success organization, and the sales organization. Now, if you actually look at the entire funnel, right? So right from the top to the bottom. So uh, typically what happens is uh, each one of these organizations runs to its own beat. That needs to change first. Everyone needs to be running on the same beat, which means that the KPIs on which all of these teams are measured on has to be the single KPI, which is revenue booked or deals closed or deals won. Whatever is that metric. Every single team that touches a customer in the process of converting a prospect or a lead to becoming a customer, to becoming a repeat customer, has to be run on the single KPI. You can decide what that KPI is, it doesn't matter, because then what you're looking at is making the entire system effective and thereafter look at how do you make that entire system efficient. Effectiveness comes first before efficiency. Today, it is easier, for example, to measure marketing based on the pipe that they've generated. So what happens? Marketing executives, so as someone very wise once said, what gets measured gets done, right? So if you are gonna measure marketing on the pipe that they've generated, what will happen? They will generate a lot of pipe. Now, the sales guys are uh, typically measured on two things, right? So one is the revenue book, and second is the conversion of leads to uh, uh, deals closed. So the sales guys will resist uh, because they will not want to accept the leads that the marketing has given, citing reasons that the marketing does not bring in quality leads. They just want to fill the pipe, so they fill pipe with junk. And that is the reason why they are not, they do not have enough pipe to close deals from. So there, now you are not competing against your competitors, but you are actually competing with each other. So what happens if you change the KPI to one KPI, which is deals closed? Then the marketing cannot simply wash their hands away saying that, no, we generated our pipe. It is sales' responsibility to close the pipe. No. So then they have to sit and work with the sales to figure out what kind of pipe do they need to generate? What kind of prospects do they, do they need to bring in into their funnel in order for the sales executives to be able to close those deals faster. And what that does is makes marketing that much more effective, makes selling that much more easier because you have very clearly identified persona and you only bring in those people into the funnel thereby increasing the productivity of everyone involved in the entire sales process. Same way, pre-sales. So they cannot just identify and say that, okay, these are the number of deals that we have supported. No. That doesn't matter. What matters is whether or not the deal got closed, right? So you need to figure out a way to support deals that needs to be closed. So every single deal where a pre-sales is involved needs to move towards closure. And if they don't close, there should be a very clearly identified reason as to why it did not close. There might be a lot of deals which do not close because um, the competitors uh, uh, did a better price. Um, they are much better ingrained in a particular industry. Your team screwed up on something. The customer decided not to go for any of the, the any of the uh, options currently available, which is status quo, uh, for them. Right. So it could be any of those. Doesn't matter. But either the deals close, or you know why the deals did not close for you. And everyone is measured on that single metric. So this is also something that uh, uh, Jenny talks about uh, uh, in the book. And that is probably what uh, she talks about uh, from a data perspective. What she says is she identifies a set of KPIs for every single one of those four, four levels of uh, data maturity that she spoke about from descriptive 
to uh, uh, you know prescriptive and everything in between for each stage she has identified kpis which uh, for which you can collect data in the entire sales process and use the data to inform your decisions on the sales process improvements right and at this i mean all at the same point uh, she talks about uh, uh, you know uh, effectiveness over um, efficiency for sure right and that's that's the core now a lot of times um, you know, what uh, also happens is um, there is no clear handoff between marketing and sales uh typically typically again this may not be the case in all uh, organizations in all businesses but typically you will find that the if you look at the sales process from here to here right so which is uh, taking a prospect from here which is where they show interest to here which is where they actually buy your product or service and become a paying customer there are multiple steps that needs to be that needs to you know happen now you'll find that the involvement of marketing is highest at this level you know and then over a period of time it kind of reduces 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 and by the time you come to the closure of the deal marketing is no longer involved which is a problem the same way if you actually look at uh, the sales involvement in the entire process sales start with no having no involvement at the start of the process the kind of their role keeps increasing 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 until the point where they are the only ones in touch with the customer when they close the deal now both these things are not right uh, according to me at least um, the reason being marketing needs to know why a customer is buying from you and what is the kind of customer that is buying from you and by being involved in the sales process they understand what kind of customer or the persona of the customer um, that is the easiest to sell to that is the fastest to sell to and once they figure that out it then becomes their responsibility to go out into the market and find people similar to these customers with whom you have sold and sold well and bring a lot of them into the pipeline and that is one way to effectively improve the throughput of the entire sales process and that is the reason why marketing should be involved right until the end of the sales process may not be as rigorously involved in terms of actively engaging with the customer but at least they should know a customer why a particular customer bought what they bought and what is the kind of profile of customers who are buying uh, vis a vis those customers which kind of you know stall in between so that they can build a profile of customers which um, the chances of uh, closing for the organization for the sales process is much higher so that they can bring in more of this uh, profile of customers into the pipe now, the reason why sales needs to be involved right at the start of the process is because they can qualify the lead right at the start if the sale, if the marketing team brings in wrong kind of profile of customers the sales needs to tell them right then and there and guys this is not what this is this will not work this is a wrong kind of customer this is a wrong kind of profile this is a wrong kind of market that you are going after and uh, we will all waste up a lot of time energy and effort following up and going through all of this uh, uh, make getting these leads go through the entire process so by cutting these leads off right at the start what sales teams do is increase their ability to focus on all the other customers that they can focus on where the chances of you closing the deal is very high vis a vis uh you know trying to figure out uh, and trying to push customers and profiles of customers who are not very likely to um buy from you so that's very critical that you know the sales and the marketing team are always involved in every single deal 
uh, at every single stage. Some more actively involved, some less actively so. Similarly, the case with uh, the customer success organization as well. So the customer success organization, if you are selling a subscription, they need to be involved early in the process, much before the customer actually signs the order line so that they understand the context in which the customer has bought the subscription uh, so that they can have an impact on when they go out and talk to these customers, you know, asking them to um, uh, start using the subscription and start uh, rolling out whatever it is that they've bought into their organization and start seeing some benefit out of it. They need to understand the context and the reason why the customer actually bought what they bought. If they do not, uh, which is a very serious problem that I see across organizations where the sales organizations does not talk with customer success organization. They'll just close the deal and um, there is an automated email that goes to the customer success organization saying that this deal is closed. Now please uh, uh, talk to the customer. And the, sale, uh, the customer success executives goes and talks to the customers trying to figure out what actually happened. And by that time, it is also likely that the guys who close the deal from the customer side have moved on to the next deal that they want to close. And the guys who are going to implement these or you know, consume these subscription are different from the ones who actually bought. So they are also not fully sure about why this was bought and what is the context and what was, what was discussed in the entire sales process. So it is important that if you have a customer success organization, that they be involved in the sales process much before the customer has actually signed that order line. Um, from a book perspective, I think um, there are some very interesting uh, uh, tidbits of uh, information that um, uh, um, Jenny shares. And um, I would recommend that um, uh, you, if you can get hold of this book, um, I think it is available in all public libraries. You should actually have a look at the book. Um, the book is called uh, uh, Data Driven by Jenny Dearborn. And uh, if nothing else, at least have a look at all the KPIs that she talks about um, for which you can collect data within your organization. Today, we live in an age where um, uh, every organization is talking about data-driven decision-making. Of course, um, uh, personally, I don't like the term data-driven decision-making. Uh, I like the term data-informed decision-making because if you only go by what data is saying, uh, there is a good chance that uh, you might get misled because um, of various reasons. I think uh, uh, the combination of data and people who understand the context in which the data comes from, uh, put them together and then uh, making decision is what is the smartest thing to do. Again, that's just me. Um, you can make your own decision uh, about what works for you. But I think the number of KPIs that she talks about uh, for an organization to mature from being having a descriptive uh, model of data collection to a prescriptive model of data collection is a very interesting journey that she talks about. And it's a fast read. I was able to finish reading the entire book in about, I think, three days. Um, so yeah, it's a good book to read. If I if I'm to give uh, my rating for the book, I think uh, I would give it a a three and a half out of uh, out of five in terms of uh, uh, the content of the book and the way it is written. It's a, it's a fairly easy read and a fairly um, fast read. So I would recommend uh, that you go ahead and read uh, the book. So that's all uh, from me today. Uh, I hope uh, you found this uh, helpful and useful. I'll come to you every uh, every week live. On the comments, um, on the description of this video, you will find a link where you can actually register yourself uh, and uh, join me on the Zoom call so that we can also have a conversation if you think, uh, if you're interested in uh, having a conversation about sales and selling. Next week, we will talk about uh, uh, a blog uh, uh, that I've written some time back uh, around uh, the traits of um, a successful sales manager. And we kind of try to uh, demystify or try to 
figure out what are some of the most important traits that you need to have as a sales manager in order for you and your team to succeed uh, as a sales organization. So until next Monday, signing off is Mukesh Gupta. Thank you. Um, have fun.